Surrounding the heavenly wheel throne seen by John were twenty-four seats upon which sat twenty-four elders. It was a vision of God within his divine counsel. Ezekiel saw a similar group when he beheld the heavenly temple. These twenty-five men were in the court of the priests. If we consider that one of the men in the group was the high priest representing the Lord, and that the remaining twenty-four were the heads of the twenty-four courses of the priesthood assigned to the temple, then we have an exact corollary to John's vision of God within his priesthood council. This was the divine assembly of gods of scripture and mythology. The divine assembly of the gods is a prevalent theme in the ancient mythologies of the world. Ancient Sumer, Akkadia, and Babylonia all had councils of the gods, led by one god in particular, On and Shamash respectively. The Egyptian god Atum or Ra had his own council of gods called a Pesegit. The number of gods within the Pesegit varied. The most common version was the Ennead, or group of nine gods. The Greco-Roman world had its own divine council. Zeus presided over a council of twelve gods on Mount Olympus, while Jupiter presided over his own pantheon. In addition to the councils in the visions of John and Ezekiel, the scriptures include other examples of the divine assembly. The psalmist Asaph wrote that God stands within the congregation of the mighty, the mighty being gods. The prophet Micaiah, as he tried to warn kings Ahab and Jehoshaphat of impending military defeat, related his vision of God sitting on his throne amidst the host of heaven. Abraham's vision of the premortal council follows the same mythic archetype. The mythological and scriptural councils of the gods were based upon the circular enclosure known as the Wheel of Heaven. The wheel was formed by the conjunction of Saturn, Venus, and Mars, with Mars representing the axle of the wheel, the radiating plasma streams from Venus forming the spokes, and Saturn's outer edge forming the rim. In the mythical archetype of the council, Mars was the central god. The radiant streamers, or spokes of the wheel, appeared to surround the central Martian god, with each representing an individual god and collectively representing the council of the gods. This was the god on his throne, surrounded by gods, angels, or in the case of John, elders. Ancient Egypt provides a good example of how the mythic imagery of the heavenly council worked. In the Egyptian coffin text, the creator god, variously called Atum, Ra, or Osiris, created his own body. He created his limbs within a glorious enclosure of light. The glory in the text is Hu, and refers to a circle of glory. It was also known as the Atum. Individually, the fiery lights extending from the planet god were the creator's limbs. Collectively, as a unified circle, they form the body of the God himself. Note that each ray of light emanating from this depiction of the Aten ends in a hand. That is, each ray is an arm or limb of the so-called sun god, which was Mars. Like Ra, the Hindu god Shiva had multiple limbs extended within a circular enclosure. In turn, each of these limbs was considered a god itself. Horus, like Ra, was an Egyptian avatar of the Martian god. Horus had four sons, often used as the heads of canopic jars placed in tombs by the mummified remains of the dead. The four sons of Horus were not only considered the children of the god, but also the bodily parts of the god. Just as Ra's limbs were independent gods, so too were the sons of Horus. 
The key to understanding the identity of the four sons is the fact that each of the gods were associated with a cardinal direction. Or, as Joseph Smith explained it, they represent the earth in its four quarters. The arrangement of the four canopic figures, or sons of Horus, in tombs reflected the heavenly archetype which they represented. Each figure was placed within a section of a chest facing each other. The chest itself represented the celestial world, with each figure representing a quarter or cardinal direction. The arrangement in the heavens would look like this. Each of the four spokes of the wheel represented a god, or in the case of the Egyptians, a son of Horus. At the same time, each spoke was a limb of the central god. The Egyptians were not unique in using this particular archetype. Buddhism has four heavenly kings, each of whom watches over a cardinal direction. Hinduism has four guardians of the directions. In Norse mythic tradition there were four dwarves, each of whom supported the four cardinal points while holding up the heavenly dome. The Greeks had the four winds who were said to come from each of the cardinal directions. They were considered gods in their own right. The Romans had their own wind gods patterned in the same way. 